Hello, I'm Seamus Dunahoo, and this video demonstrates the trilateration method for visiting the Voyager 1 space probe in the game Elite Dangerous. To use this method, first of all, you will need the Soul System permit, and to obtain that permit, you need to get rank 4 in the Federation Navy or higher. That's Petty Officer or higher. Second, you will need the most recent numbers for the distances between Voyager 1 and Sedna and Persephone. Uh, when you have those numbers, either put them on a sheet of paper next to you, or put if you're in solo play, you can put them in local chat. The NPCs don't care if you're chatting in local. Next, while you're sitting near the sun, within 100 light seconds of the sun, you will want to go to your galaxy map and select the following solar system. Select not plot route. You want select specifically. Then turn your ship and go to full throttle and you will want to super cruise in the direction of that marker. Make sure you keep an eye on your fuel gauge. Um, expect it'll only take you about half an hour to super cruise out to the necessary distance of 2.3 million light seconds away from the sun. Uh, but since you're probably going to want to spend some time once you're actually there, assume you need about an hour or two in su super cruise. That way you, you've super cruised there for half an hour, and then you have time to actually take pictures and whatnot. While you're super cruising, uh, go to your left-hand panel, the navigation tab, and set the following filters. Points of interest landfall planets and moons, and stars. You're going to be looking for something called Ancient Probe, which is a point of interest. And points of interest are only visible within 1,000 light seconds, which is true whether you're near the sun or you're way out the hell away from anything else. And trying to get within 1,000 light seconds of something that's 2.3 million light seconds away from the sun and at least a million light seconds away from anything else is tricky. From the point of view of the sun, the size of the target we would need to hit in order to spot the ancient probe directly is about one is a circle 1% of the diameter of the navigation circle that you see in the center of the screen right now. It's a tiny target. So this initial supercruise phase is just to get us in the general vicinity of Voyager 1. It's not going to land us exactly on target. As you start getting close to 2.3 million light seconds away from Sol, you will want to reduce your throttle. And remembering you want 2317434 light seconds. I'm going to go all the way down to zero throttle now. And I'm going to go back and forth between zero throttle and one eighth throttle. Two, three, one, seven, four, three, four. And you want to try and get this as close as possible. Uh, within a 50 light second difference will suffice, but the closer the better. Alright, good enough. What I want to do next 
is match one of the other two distances. Uh, and just arbitrarily, I'm going to start with Persephone. So I need my, my most recent number for this is that Voyager 1 was 2,385,839 light seconds away from Persephone when I was testing this earlier today. This changes by a few light seconds every day, so the numbers need to be updated at least every two months. Uh, otherwise, they're going to be too inaccurate to be able to find Voyager 1 like this, and you're going to have to go back to the standard method of trying to match, trying to use parallax to match the sun against the background stars. 2385839. Uh, I'm at 2387, so I'm a little too far, um, too far away from Persephone right now. So I'm going to target Persephone. And I'm going to turn my ship such that the sun is directly, either directly overhead or directly underneath me. It doesn't matter which. Um, I'm going to have Persephone, uh, or, or at least the base of the vertical rod for Persephone, somewhere in front of me because I want to get closer to Persephone. So with the sun directly overhead, as I move forward, my distance to the sun should not change, or it should not change much. Whereas my distance to Persephone will decrease because I'm getting closer. And you can see my distance to Persephone in uh, here in the lower left corner of my screen. So 2385839. Alright, I overshot just a little bit, but it's no but it's only off by two light seconds. Let me double check my distance to Sol. 2317284. Uh, so I went off course a little bit, so I got a little too close. Um, so my soul distance is wrong by let's see, 150 light seconds. And my Sedna distance. 2379128. I am too close to Sedna by about uh, roughly 550 light seconds or so. Doing the math in my head. So now that I've matched the Persephone distance, what I want to do is turn my ship again so that Persephone is either directly overhead or directly underneath, doesn't matter which. And that Sedna is somewhere in front of me. Alright, I think Persephone is now directly underneath me. And Sedna is somewhere ahead. Or at least its vertical proje projection relative to my ship is ahead of me. Is that correct? Hold on. Sedna is 2379128... No, I'm sorry. I want to get further away from Sedna. So I need Sedna to be behind me. My mistake. Good thing I double-checked that. Alright, so... There we go. Persephone is directly overhead, and Sedna is behind me. Uh, I'm going to actually target Sedna now. Uh, two, three, seven, nine, seven, nine, eight. Overshot very slightly. 
Let me double check the Persephone distance again. 2385, 839. Only a little bit off, not too bad. And the soul distance. 2317592. Alright, I need to get a little closer to the sun now. So what I'm gonna do at this point is turn my ship. I'm gonna target the sun, first of all. And I'm going to turn my ship such that the vertical rods for Persephone and Sedna are to the left and to the right of my ship. Right. Uh, imagine, if you will, a horizontal line going straight through the middle of my sensor display, through my uh, right through my ship, uh, in a left-right manner. Um, and I'm trying to get... Here, I'm trying to get these two, the bases of these two vertical rods on this horizontal line. So if I keep them on that horizontal line like that, and I move forward, pitching upwards as necessary, then my distances to Persephone and Sedna should not change. Meanwhile, with the sun in front of me, I'm going to get uh, close the distance to the sun. 2317592... Yeah, I want to get closer. Now, for the sun, since the sun is not a landable body, I'm not going to have uh, the distance to the sun in the lower left cockpit panel. Rather, I have to look at the left-hand navigation tab. But I'm going to start moving forward. Bingo! There's Ancient Probe. Target that. And of course, because I have it targeted, that changes my acceleration, uh, my ability to accelerate. But there you go. That's how you find the ancient probe. 75% throttle. And if you saw my earlier video on super braking, I have to be within 29 megameters and going 29 megameters per second. So divide that by 10, that's 2.9. 2.9 line seconds. Full throttle, zero throttle. And there is Voyager 1. Right, so that's how you use trilateration to find uh, the Voyager 1 space probe. Uh, so this method is useful for people who have trouble uh, trying to um, trying to target this, uh, trying to use parallax to match the sun against the pattern of the background stars. So if you have trouble with that sort of thing, uh, the trilateration method should help you out. Uh, but this does have the limitation that the way Frontier Developments implemented this, Voyager 1 does not move relative to the Sun, so this distance never changes. But Sedna and Persephone move in their orbits, so these numbers are going to change by several light seconds every day. Uh, if you found this uh, method helpful, if you've just used this method just now to find Voyager 1, uh, please do uh, fellow travelers a favor and put a comment in this video, uh, on this video, with uh, the date and the latest numbers for the Sedna and Persephone distances. Um, I'm also going to try and link this video on the Voyager 1 article on the Elite Dangerous wiki. So the comments section of that wiki article might also be a good place to put the numbers. Uh, I'm Seamus Dunahoo. Thank you for watching.